Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, a grassroots movement is blazing a path for healthier, more active children in Rochester and Monroe County through a number of engaging initiatives, and its mission is in its name. The Healthy Kids Coalition of Common Ground Health is led by Dina Faticone, Director of Community Health and Engagement, and she joins us today along with Eric Stevens, Parent Engagement Specialist, and Jen Biedemann, Policy and Research Associate at Healthy Kids. Thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, Tiana. Yeah, thanks. So that's thanks. Healthy Kids with an I, and Dina, you said that it's an acronym. What does Healthy Kids stand for? It is. It's an acronym that stands for Healthy Eating and Active Living Through Policy and Practice Initiatives for Kids. Okay, and how do you accomplish that mission? Well, Healthy Kids, we are, as you said, we're a grassroots coalition. Um, we're really working to change policy, to change systems, to change our, our built and our natural environment. Um, to promote uh, active living, to make sure that kids and families can have access to healthy foods, whether mm -hmm. in their schools or in their neighborhoods. Um, and we really, we bring together a lot of grassroots leaders, different okay. organizations, so really try and take people from all sorts of um, parts of our community to come together, look at potential solutions and barriers to being active or healthy in our community. Um, and together we, um, we advocate for more active kids. Mm -hmm. Who are some of those community partners that you work with? Uh, that's a great question. We work from every. We work with everyone from um, the city of Rochester, of course, uh -huh. and Monroe County, um, grassroots organizations like Project Hope and neighborhood associations like the Beechwood Neighborhood Coalition. We also um, bring together Food Link and other like-minded child organizations like the Children's Agenda, um, and then some non-traditional partners okay. like folks from transportation um, uh -huh. that all come together to work on these issues. Mm -hmm. um, Eric. Why is parent engagement so important to the mission of Healthy Kids? Uh, parent engagement is so important because we want parents to be a part of our change agenda. And when parents are involved, it leads to uh, changes, it leads to uh, families being more engaged and active, and we just look for opportunities to make sure that parents play a role from the very beginning of all the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And Jen, as a research analyst, how does data come into play when, when you're looking at issues that you want to tackle in Rochester? Yeah, so we, um, really all of our interventions are based in what the data is telling us and what the community has told us. Mm -hmm. So whether it's an example, um, when we were doing lunch observations in schools across the city school district, we worked with kids um, to really see what they were eating what they were throwing out and quantified that. Um, mm -hmm. We partnered with parents and parents, at, we trained parents in how to actually collect the data alongside us. Um, and then asked kids, what do you like about school meals? What don't you like about school meals? And if you had that magic wand, what would you wanna see ah. while you eat your school meals? Oh. Um, and then on top of collecting that local data, we look to see what's happening across the country. What are the best practices that are mm -hmm. happening in the space around school lunch or school meals? What are have other school districts done that have been really successful? What have kids liked? And then we really marry both of that, of that here's the, the national data, the mm -hmm. national best practice. Here's what Rochester and the community and parents and kids are saying that they would like to see, and we propose those solutions that marry both of those together. Mm -hmm. So what were some of those solutions or, or action items that came out of your lunch observations? I think one of my favorite examples is um, two years ago now, we piloted salad bars in nine oh, nice. City of Rochester schools. And we had such great reception from the kids when we put those salad bars in the, cl in the cafeterias. They really felt like they were going to a restaurant and this was something mm -hmm. special for them. Um, and we, we couple that with um, food demonstrations and um, the opportunity for kids to taste new fruits and vegetables because we know some of this is new to them and, mm -hmm. and kids can be finicky and they um, each have a different palate. So right. we know that making the, uh, the policy or the environmental change is just as important as doing the education alongside mm -hmm. of it. And, and I would add, well, uh, I think one of my favorite takeaways from that uh, was that the students wanted to be listened to and they right. wanted a voice. Right. So we partnered with the Russia City School District Food Service team and we started Youth Food Advisory Councils. So there's both a elementary version and a teen version where these kids can come t 
together and meet directly with food service and share their concerns and their ideas to make school food better. Mm -hmm. What were some of the kids' ideas about school lunch? Um, they wanted simpler menu items. Oh. Um, some of them wanted the food cooked by grandma, yeah. <laughs> which isn't going to happen. <laughs> um, but really, I think really they wanted someone to listen to them uh -huh. and they want to be treated as customers. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would say the, the salad bar pilot really came directly from what kids were telling us. Um, I think there's a, a misperception that kids don't want to eat healthy foods or fruits oh, and vegetables. Right. What they were saying to us is, is they like to eat them raw. They like to try huh. them um, in different formats and uh, they wanted the opportunity to put together their own salads rather than having a salad that was pre-made and mm -hmm. you know they want to have the choice of what they put on it. Yeah. They also shared with us that they wanted a more positive environment in okay. the cafeteria. I had one little girl who said it would be really great if Beyonce could come and oh, perform. Oh, that would be great. Um, you know, we can't, we can't make Beyonce come uh -huh. to the school, but we've done a lot of work in helping promote that healthy cafeteria environment okay. by providing training to um, food, food service workers and support staff um, in promoting that healthier cafeteria-based environment. Excellent. What are some of the other campaigns um, that you have for people in the community to get involved? We have a number of different campaigns. Um, right now we are actually pulling together a group that's working on traffic safety. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we've heard in the community in Rochester is that uh, a lot of parents aren't comfortable with their kids going outside to play, mm -hmm. to walk, to bike. Um, so we're really working on uh, a couple of things. One is changing that environment, so making the environment more conducive to being outside and active, but also thinking about our traffic culture here mm -hmm. in Rochester. Um, we, you know, it's very easy for us to drive in Rochester. We don't have the congestion that other large cities do, so uh, many of us hop in our car for, you know, even those short trips that um, probably we could be walking or biking. Right. Um, so we're, we're right now advocating for a couple of different things, including uh, lowering the speed limit in okay. city neighborhoods, um, which is a, a direct result of talking to the community and hearing mm -hmm. from neighborhood associations what would make a difference for them. Mm -hmm. Jen, tell us about Play Rocks. So Play Rocks has been an ongoing campaign of the Healthy Kids Coalition for the last two years. We can't believe it, um, but Play Rocks is, um, basically uh, sharing that kids have the right to play mm -hmm. um, and that together we can advocate for for change that supports um, kids right to play and having that access and also um, safe place to go so mm -hmm. we view access to um, a safe place to play being things like what Dina was just talking about. Can a, a child go and walk to that park? Can they bike to that park? Is there a park that, or play space I should say, that is easy for them to get mm -hmm. to, that parents feel comfortable for that child to go to mm -hmm. on its own. Um, and then access, we really think about, okay, if we have these spaces where kids are going and playing, are we making sure that those play spaces are accessible to all kids? So we know right. that boys and girls play differently. We know that kids of different ages play differently. And we know kids of different abilities play differently. So how are we promoting that inclusive play environment for kids mm -hmm. across the city? Um, sure. And really have been pushing this idea that play doesn't always have to be that destination. I, you know, I, right. I shared that um, you know, I use the example of parks and play spaces and people automatically think, oh, there has to be playgrounds everywhere. Mm -hmm. But not always the case. Um, back um, more than seven years ago almost, we started um, really to ask the question, where are kids playing and what can we do it? What, how can we make those play spaces better mm -hmm. um, with five neighborhoods? Um, and same thing as the lunch observations, we partnered um, with neighborhood associations, trained residents, we went out and really looked at play spaces as not just those traditional parks and play, playgrounds, but also w where kids actually were. So mm -hmm. were they playing on the street? Were they playing in a vacant lot across across the street from their house? Were they playing at community organizations, our local YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, sure. um, um, places like that, or our centers, um, and said, how can we make that better? And what we found is that actually majority of kids um, don't actually play at parks and playgrounds, hmm. surprisingly, and not that they're not important, they're critical and, right. and, and very important. Um, for our community, but if we know that 82% of kids are playing in the non-traditional spaces, hmm. like 
the streets, parking lots, et cetera, then how do we activate and promote a safe play environment for those kids in those spaces? Right. Eric, when um, people see you guys out in the community, what's their reaction to the work that you're doing? A lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. And parents are looking for opportunities to be engaged and they want to know ways they can be involved and help make their communities more livable. Mm -hmm. I, I would add to that, you know, um, Play Rocks is a great example of where, you know, we sort of set the stage and um, created the spark and it, it's grown into a grassroots movement. Um, we've held an event each, the past two summers called Play Rocks Your Neighborhood, uh -huh. where the idea was we would host a, a coordinated citywide play day where different neighborhoods um, got together to host a play day for kids right in their neighborhood mm -hmm. at the same time on the same day. The first year we had eight groups participate and this past summer we had over 20. So um, this has really caught on and I think is just evidence that uh, parents are very enthusiastic. They tell us that, you know, play and some of the other issues we're working on are really about quality of life for them and mm -hmm. for their kids. Sure. Um, final question, why is this so important for Rochester? I think, um, you know, Rochester is such a great place to live and um, mm -hmm. over and over we see that Rochester is rated as one of the top places to raise a family right. and we want to make sure that that rings true for everyone. Um, I think that there are some people that would say there are barriers to um, raising kids healthy in certain neighborhoods and we know that place matters so mm -hmm. we're really um, working hard to make sure that that idea that Rochester is a great place to raise a family is true for all not just for some. Excellent well thank you guys so much for coming on today and for more information about the Healthy Kids Coalition you can call 585-224-3101 or check out their website at healthykids.org that's healthy with an I.